Good afternoon from Dubai and welcome to ICCLI, World Class Culinary Online. Today, we have yet another interesting session in the series of webinars on layered cakes. And today it's on Bird's Milk Cake. I will now hand over to our host, Shanaz Raja, Director of Courses at the ICCA Dubai. Over to you, Shanaz. Thank you, Karun. Bird's Milk Cake indeed. Piche Maloko. Did you even imagine there was something that something called bird's milk even existed? It actually does. And I discovered just this week from Google. Chef Maya Sakanuwa from our faculty of Patisari here at the ICCA is going to demonstrate this cake to you. Some of you who are here for the first time, so very, very quick intro on ICCA. The International Center for Culinary Arts in Dubai is an internationally renowned vocational education training center delivering from personal and professional education in cookery, bakery, and patisserie. Do watch on to see where Chef Maya gets bird's milk from and what she does it with. Chef Maya, how many birds did you milk? Good afternoon, guys. Everyone, yes, Miss Shanaz, better to not know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our another session. And thank you, first of all, I want to say and tell thank you very much for your likes, for your shares from uh, last webinar. And even some people, even the recreate the cake, what I have uh, teach you guys. And it was really, really happy to see that you are still interested and still with us. Thank you. Stay with us. And today, another very humble cake. Again, uh, not very popular. Many of you may think it's the first time this cake, and I'm going to show you how to make it. So this is another layered cake, my favorite cake, which name is bird's milk cake. Yes, guys, don't stress. We are not going to really use bird's milk, okay? And don't try to uh, catch uh, poor flies and uh, try to milk them. No, no, no. It's just the name of the cake, guys, okay? Name have been cake have been created by Polish pastry chef who wanted to give this name, this cake specific name and he decided to give to cake the bird's milk cake which is very difficult to find okay so that's from where the name comes and very popular in uh, East European countries and we're going to learn now how to produce this cake very simple very easy ingredients get comfortable we are starting right now and maybe take some notes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask the questions. We will have some gaps to answer on all your questions. And let's get started. So cake have only three components. It's chocolate sponge layer, meringue souffle layer, and the mirror glaze. We start with the chocolate sponge layer. Very simple whisking method, which means we are going to whisk together the egg, sugar, until we have nice fluffy texture. I'm going to make a little noise, guys. Forgive me for that. We are going to whisk until our egg will aerate and we'll capture all these small, small air bubbles. Yes, today we have Bradley as our assistant. Bradley is our alumni student. Come, Bradley, why you go fast? Come closer. He's scared to stand close <laughs> because I look more shorter when he's closer to me. I look like to go much from under the tree, huh? <laughs> okay, this is Bradley. He is working already in industry. He graduated from ICCA. He finished his whole kitchen courses and pastry. And we are super proud to help him today and find a few minutes to assist us and to stay with us. Okay, egg is whisking. You keep your eggs whisking until it's nice and fluffy. When to stop? When egg color will become lighter. It means there is enough air bubbles so that then you can stop. And it has to have a ribbon texture, okay? Keep whisking. While it's whisking, we will add a little bit of honey. Again, guys, in my case, I like to use honey to give that aroma, guys. Again, if somebody has any allergies, you use a golden syrup, but normally we use only honey. It gives a nice, beautiful taste to the Okay. Keep whisking. Yes, it's almost there. And then I'm 
going to fold into my cake the dry ingredients last, but first I will add some leavening agent because we will have we have to get some fluffy textured sponge. Okay. My eggs are nicely whisked, and now I will show you the texture of the mixture, what you have to get here. Yeah, you can see I have a lot of air bubble. Thank you very much. And make sure you scrap off everything. Yes, and you can see the color of mixture, right? It's very light and even texture is very, very airy, guys. This is what we are looking for. Thank you, my dear. So now it's time to add a little bit of the vinegar and soda. I will activate my soda and vinegar and you can see the bubbles. Yes, you can see the bubbles. Mix it with your mixture and start to fold in the flour. Fold in a few additions, guys. Do not have any lumps. Keep folding. Do not use mixer. Why? Because if we use mixer, it will, uh, it will uh, kill all these air bubbles, guys. So do not use. Just fold it nicely. Okay? Gently. Another half. And then in, in the end, we will add some chocolate uh, cocoa powder, which is made from the cocoa paste. Now, some people prefer to make a burnt milk cake with a vanilla sponge, which is also correct, guys, because you can still get it. But I love chocolate taste. I prefer to make it with chocolate sponge, guys, okay? Try both of them to make and uh, com um, compare. So, which one you like more? Both ways are correct. Once all the flour is in, I will add my cocoa powder and my butter for uh, cake is ready. Now, now butter I can make once in one frame and then slice into three equal layers or I can divide direct while I'm, my butter is still not baked, still raw. I can place into the three similar equal size of the frames. Again, you can go with square shape, you can go with round shape, guys. It's, it's up to you. Whatever frames or tins, cake tins you have at home, you can use it. Okay, my butter is ready. I make sure that I do not have any lumps of cocoa or flour. Crush the lumps. Done. Fast. Fast and easy. Nothing difficult, guys. Very simple sponge. And I'm going to place this mixture into the frame. So this is 20 centimeter frame, which I'm going to use three of them to get the equal layers. But if you do not have, guys, you go just in one frame and then after baking, you can divide your sponge. But make sure the layers are equal because on the slice, you will definitely see these chocolate layers very, very clearly. Level your cake, level your butter for cake, and send it to preheat it over 160 degrees. If you are baking all mixture in one frame, you will need around about 20, 25 minutes. You will again check with two speed and to check if it's done. If you are baking in separate frames, you will take you will need only 10 minutes to get it done. Okay, send it to oven and by the time the sponge is uh, baking, we are going to, uh, uh, I think, I think our audience will have already some questions. Like last time we had many questions and let's see, Mishana, do we have any questions already? So, Maya, this time we don't have any questions for the cake. I think it's because we've used this technique before. So, what we'll do is we'll give them our question, okay? Okay, so our, let's check. Yes, our question to you is, how did Chef Maya add the fat into the cake batter? <laughs> That's a very <laughs> tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> they got it. Oh, they almost <laughs> got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. This is really For give the questions, they will be right. Yes, divided. Okay. So 45% uh, say she folded it into the egg mixture. 15% say she folded, she mixed it with the flour mixture. 
and 40% says she made a fatless sponge. Oh, very good. Okay, last answer was a correct answer, guys. So please be focused because we may ask another questions, okay? This is kind of exam for you guys, okay? <laughs> Keep attention on all details we are doing here and get correct answers. Now, I think it's time to go for another layer of our cake, which will be mirroring souffle. What is mirroring? Mirroring? This mm, very we can we get all ingredients for mirror and we can show how to do the how to make the Italian mirror. Meringue is basically whipped and white with the sugar, but there is three kinds of meringues: French, Italian, and Swiss meringue. Now, if you want to learn all three of them, you have to sign for ICCA course, you will learn all three. But today I'm going to show you only Italian meringue, which is very stable and which we are going to set by using the gelatin. Guys, when it comes to pastry, there is many technical parts which sometimes it's not possible to explain completely in 30, 40 minutes. That's why we need more time. If you want to go more deeper and learn all the techniques, you have to do the course first, okay? So, now, first step, what we are going to do, we are going to soak gelatin, bloom gelatin in cold water. This is gelatin sheet for people who never have used gelatin. This is setting agent and this is how it looks like. In supermarkets, in grocery shops, you may find the powder version of gelatin, which is also fine to use, guys, okay? So one sheet gelatin is three grams. You can, if your recipe says one sheet gelatin, you can just replace with three gram of powdered gelatin, but you are using in the same manners, okay? Now, before we start, I already bloom gelatin, and after blooming gelatin, we'll look like this. We have to bloom it in ice cold water, strain it, drain it nicely to not have the extra water in it. And if you can see the texture, it's, it's very, very soggy oh, and slippery. Yes. So this is an agent, setting agent, which will turn your souffle into set beautiful texture. Okay. Later on, we are going to melt it and then add into our Italian mirror. So, how to make Italian meringue? Basically, this is meringue made from the sugar syrup. Water, sugar, we place together and bring to boil until it will reach 115 degrees, 115. So, as soon as it will reach 115 degrees, we are going to start to whisk our egg white. Again, this is very technical, guys. That's why I choose to show you a little bit of techniques. So egg whites goes into a mixing bowl. And we are going to wait until our sugar syrup will reach correct temperature, which is 150. As soon as it will reach 115 degrees, my lovely assistant will start to whisk the egg white on very high speed, guys. If you are working alone, not an issue. Just be close to your mixer and you can multitask guys. Again, kitchen is all about multitasking, time management. Little bit longer time you keep your meringue on the heat, it may burn or it may affect on the texture of the entire mixture. Okay, be careful with that. 81, slowly my temperature in my sugar syrup is rising. I will wait for two or three minutes and will reach on right temperature yes 94 please get ready everything is very very specific guys when we are making the Italian meringue which is very very stable guys if you want to make some pies with uh, let's say lemon meringue pies not only for souffle you can use Italian meringue yeah you can use this meringue and decorate your wedding cake with many other purposes guys okay 190 Okay, 1110, get ready, and 115, start to whisk it. Start to whisk on very high temperature, but keep your mixture, keep your sugar syrup to boil until temperature will reach to 118. And then your sugar syrup is ready to go 
to the whip egg white. Yes, very technical, guys. I'm sure after this mission, we will have many, many questions because this is something new for our audience. Okay, 118, my sugar syrup is ready, and I will start to add into my whip egg very slowly, guys. Yes, go very, very, very slowly. Be careful because it is too hot. Why we go slowly? Because if we go too fast, the new egg will not be fluffy, airy, it will be more soft and funny. So keep whisking and adding gradually your sugar syrup, hot sugar syrup into your mixture. The main time I measure gelatin, which is going to go to the mixture direct after sugar syrup. Yeah, this is little bit technical part. I'm giving attention on here first. Yeah, once it's done, we are adding gelatin. Once your egg white is hot, because why? Because if your egg white is already room temperature, gelatin will not dissolve, guys. Gelatin will turn into lumps. So, which is not good then when you eat your meringue, you will feel the gelatin lumps in it. Okay? Be careful with that. Now I'm going to wait until my egg white will be completely cool, adding some vanilla. Again, it's optional guys, if you do not want to add vanilla, you skip this step. So keep whisking. By the time my meringue will be cool completely, the texture will be very light and airy guys, which is required to make the meringue souffle. Now to make my egg white more stable, I can use a little bit of cream of tartar. What is cream of tartar? This is acid, which it's stabilizer. So if you do not have cream of tartar, you can add just a few drops of lemon juice, or you can add a few drops of vinegar, white vinegar, so which will help meringue to become stable. Okay? So keep whisking. It is almost there. We clean as we go. Yes, which is again very important. Once my souffle is a cold, I will add cream of tartar, just one pinch, guys. You have recipe in your cart, and whoever do not have, you will get the email with all this video and the recipe card. Okay, once it's cold, yes, just check your mixing bowl. It has to be completely in room temperature. Okay, which will give, by this time, your meringue will have beautiful shine, guys. If you skip and try to do fast, nothing gonna work. The texture will not be there and your uh, souffle will not have that beautiful shine. Okay, now, it's found already. I remove from the mixer and I will show you the texture of your meringue, yeah? It's very, very stable. You can see it's stable already. And this is what we are looking for. Yes, nice and shiny. And this is going to be the uh, pipe into the in between our chocolate layers. OK? We place it in piping bag. And we are going to use it a little bit later. OK, here we go. Yes. So, any questions, Mishanas? I think now I'm expecting some questions. If not now, guys, later on when you try, you can anytime ask and we will be happy to answer on your questions. Yes, Mishanas? Yes, Maya, I've, all, I've answered one or two on your behalf, but uh, there's one maybe which you can talk about. It's a private question. Uh, can I add flavors to this meringue souffle? Can I add flavor and color? Yes, guys, you can add flavor and color. This souffle can be used not only for this cake. Let's say you want to make um, uh, some party with some funny kind of the tartalets, yes, with meringue tartalet. You can just pipe and make it look nice, yeah. You can use it for the lemon meringue pies. You can use it for a decoration of the baked Alaska. You can use it for to decorate your wedding cake, as I told already. So. It's uh, it's not only for these cakes, guys. Okay, or if if you like to eat meringue just like that, guys, this is perfect. 
this air, which is not very heavy, not very fat, and for summer time, beautiful. I can now, I can pipe into glasses, chill it, and just add some fresh berries and serve it in summer time. Beautiful, not very sweet and not very fat, okay? That's perfect dessert for the people who do not like that heavy creams, guys, okay? Okay, Bradley, we do not need this mixer, we can take it away. And now we move forward for another, there is any questions more mission us or we wait for them? That's okay, Maya, I'll answer the ones, they're simple okay, enough. Okay, very no good, guys. Keep asking questions, Mishanas also can answer because she's also a chef, she's also, uh, she knows all our programs and can answer on any of your questions. By the time it's happening, I'm moving for next hour step, which will be the chocolate mirror glaze. Now, Many of you have asked how to make perfect glazing, how to make beautiful cover for our cake. Last time I showed you one kind of the ganache which we use to cover our cake. This is another kind of the glaze which we call mirror glaze because it, it is more shiny. Okay, how we are going to make the mirror glaze? Now I will show you and you can repeat and make it happen at your home. So again, I'm going to use a uh, gelatin, which is a setting agent and which will help your uh, glaze to to cover your cake very, very gentle and set on top of your cake. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place my sugar cream. Okay, sugar. Use a custard sugar. Some water. Just a little bit water. A little bit of cream whipping cream and we add a little bit of cocoa powder all this mixture i'm going to mix and as soon as my mixture is nice and hot i'm going to add chocolate in it to let chocolate melt keep mixing to not have these lumps in your glaze okay because cocoa may not dissolve perfect, it may stay lumpy. Now, my mixture is nice and hot. I will add chocolate chips and I will mix and I will wait until chocolate is completely melted in our mixture and I'm going to place it on top of the gelatin. Okay, we need one gelatin sheet which we already bloom in water. Blooming of gelatin means you will soak gelatin in cold water let it become nice and soggy. I will show you now, guys, to see how it's happening, how the texture is. Okay, nice and uh, soggy. It should not be dissolving in blooming water. Your gelatin should dissolve inside your warm mixture. Okay, drain the gelatin to not have extra water in it and place into your jar. Once your glazing is done, you will have nice shiny kind of chocolate mixture which i'm going to add pull it down a little bit mix it make sure there is no lumps if you are having some small lumps it's okay guys also it can happen sometimes you can strain your uh, glaze and you can use it okay once it's done Pull it down, guys, a little bit. Why it's important? Because gelatin uh, may uh, damage on affection of high heat. That's why make sure that mixture is not above 50 degrees and add on top of your gelatin. Let gelatin dissolve. Mix it and cool it down completely in room temperature or if you are in brush, guys, you can use a chiller just to pull it down. Once your glaze is mixed with gelatin, you will see you will not have any more gelatin. You will see just a chocolate nice mixture, which I'm going to, which will be a little bit more uh, thicker when it will cool down. Now it's too liquid because it is too hot now. If I add on top of my cake, it may damage my cake. Okay? Send it to chiller or keep for half an hour in room temperature and then only use it. Okay, let's go. 
The chocolate glaze goes to Chile because we are in Russia. We have only 30 minutes to complete our dessert. And by the time it's happening, I'm going to show you how to build the cake, how to build these beautiful layers. As you can see, my sponge already have baked. I already sliced them into three beautiful equal layers and I'm going to build it now. Now, so assembling of cake starting with uh, uh, soaking our sponge a little bit with sugar syrup. Now, sugar syrup you may make guys one into one. How much water, that much sugar, just bring it to boil. Now, if you are uh, using alcohol in your dessert, then you may go with some nice uh, cognac or some brandy or whatever, guys, yeah? If, if you are not, for example, you know all European desserts, they originally have alcohol in it, yeah? Even my chef used to use so much alcohol, guys. From one bite, you are nice and tipsy, but please, if you are not using alcohol, you can flavor it still with nice cloves and with the vanilla, guys. Bring it to boil with few pieces of cloves and vanilla, okay? Or if you want to use some other flavorings, go ahead and do it. Now I uh, boil my sugar syrup with cloves and vanilla, which you can smell the nice aroma of the cloves up there. Okay, I'm going to just soak my each sponge to make it even more softer. Approximate 100 ml of the sugar syrup on each sponge. And I'm going to, uh, and we have scissor. Yes. I'm going to just uh, wipe my drink on top of each layer. One, you can use piping bag, guys. You can use just a palette knife, whatever you are comfortable with to make beautiful, nice layer of the cake. Yes, you can see how nice and shiny my mirror is and stable. It should not be runny, guys. It should be like this stable. Now, once it's done, thank you, you can just level it with a palette knife to get beautiful, nice level. And you can go ahead with another layer of the sponge. Yes, make sure you spread it nice, equal, have equal amount of the meringue. Again, if you want to be super, super perfect, then you use a scale and scale each layer of the cake so that you will get perfect size of the cake. Yes, press a little bit. And again, another layer of the sponge. We are going to Again, soak it with the sh some sugar syrup, okay? And here we go, make sure your sugar syrup is everywhere, all the sponge completely nice and wet, okay? And another layer of the puree. This is already, I have shown you guys. Please. Uh, duplicate this cake and I want to see more cakes on Instagram and social media so that we will know that you are liking us, you are liking our desserts and if you have more questions you are always welcome to ICC guys and we are, we are here from Sunday to Thursday guys. If you want to have some sweets, learn how to make some sweets, you are more than welcome. Okay. Almost there, yes. And last layer, and we are going to glaze. By this time, my glazing will be already nice and cold. Last layer, you can put upside down. To get nice equal. You already can see layers, right, guys? It's not really accurate now, but after glazing, I'm going to trim the edges, yeah? Wait and see how I'm doing it. Okay, cake has to stay in chiller for a little time. To get nice and uh, solid because now it's too soft guys to slice you will not get the perfect lines of the uh, beautiful cuts that's why you keep your cake maybe like for an hour in chiller and then only start slicing it okay here we go this is done 
and last layer of the souffle, and we can glaze our cake. Last layer can be a little bit thinner, and we can use all leftovers of your souffle and cover complete, completely your cake. Okay. We go nice and gentle layer. Let's use palette knife to get perfect, nice layer of the cake. Okay. And now what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my chocolate glaze. It's already cold. Yes, and I'm going to glaze it. Now we have already here because we do not have time, as I told you guys, to wait and for the chocolate glaze to cool down that I already prepared in advance and uh, now it's ready to use now we clean as we go which is very important when we are assembling especially the cake and now I'm going to glaze the cake and I'm going to send the cake to chiller to let it get nice and cold and set and then I'm going to slice it okay make sure your glaze is nice and smooth and now, just cover it completely. We can have tissue. Yes. Okay. Clean your palette knife. Do not have any extra, extra meringue on it. And here we go. Make sure your glaze is nice and smooth, guys. Okay? Yes. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Okay, glaze it nicely. Make sure your glazing is all over your cake. If you want to cover completely your cake, even sides of your cake, go from the sides and the glaze will just slide off. If you do not want, you want, you are looking just for top layer, which is also fine. You just go a little bit, cut a little bit your cake. Please, thank you very much. Tap it a little bit and send it to chiller to set. After like half an hour, I'm going to trim the edges and I'm going to show you last touch and decoration, which is the most fun part. And uh, any questions, Ms. Shanas, again? Let's give chance to our audience to ask some questions while we're here. Yes, Maya. Uh, what temperature should the glaze be when you pour it over the cake? Yes, 38, 37, 38 degrees, guys. Why? To not damage the cake. As I told, the, if your glaze is too hot, then it may uh, damage the shape of the cake and it may not set perfectly as you want. So that's why be careful with that, to not go with too hot glazing. Okay? Now, Last touch. Any more questions, Mishana? That's it, Maya. That's it for now. That's, That's it. it. Let's go forward and uh, slice a cake and trim our cake and put some uh, nice decoration on the cake, which is my favorite part, guys. Yes, I think all ladies like that last part when we are making our cake nice and pretty. Yes, I clean as I go. Okay, very good. Take it up and here we go. After setting, the cake will look like this, guys. And we are going to trim just the edges and start to slice. You can slice it in square, you can slice it in red triangle shape. It's up to you how you are going to set. Or you can keep it just like this and just serve it to your guests for sharing. Okay? Now, how we slice? Another difficult part is slicing this cake. Why? Because the souffle is very soft and delicate. Do not damage the edges. We are going to use hot water and knife. Dip your knife. Take big chef knife, dip into hot water. Make sure your knife is hot but not wet and slice the edges. Very, very carefully. This is very delicate job, guys. Okay? So if you feel your knife is cold, again make it hot and trim the edges. Okay. And you have to make sure your souffle is not getting 
dirty, guys. That is also another challenge. Yeah. Basically, the texture of souffle is like a marshmallow, guys. Yeah. This is also the way how we make a marshmallow. We whip it white with the gelatin. Yes. Yeah? Very similar texture. Okay. One slice. And another one. Yes, Ridley? Yes, sir. Are you ready to slice it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you want to demonstrate? I don't mind. <laughs> okay, I trust you, but uh, next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Slice it. Yes. Trimmed parts, keep it on side. Okay, take another tissue. This is very, very difficult part of the preparation. Last touch, guys. Okay. Once we trim them, and then another layer. And we get ready. Bradley, can you please make ready all the yes. decorations that we have to use? If you feel it's difficult to slice, guys, you can freeze the cake. Let's say keep in chiller overnight. Your souffle will be nice and stable. And then only slice your cake. Okay? If you feel it's a very difficult and messy, you can do that also. Normally, we do like that. We freeze the cake. But as this cake is now a little bit more fresh, we are not going to freeze it. We are going to just slice it and show you the final result. Thank you very much. And last one. You already can see the layers, right? Last touch. Last slice. The trim parts, guys, do not throw. Okay, no wastage in kitchen. You can give to people now to try. <laughs> Who is waiting for general part, big part of the cake. And cannot wait, yeah, for tasting. Okay, normally kids like these parts, guys. Yeah, if you are mom and have a kid, I'm sure in this time, in this moment, kids will grab and steal your three parts. Okay, very good. Now we have nice, beautiful layers, and now we are going to make a beautiful decorations. Put it on top of our cakes here. Yeah. Water can go away. And I need just the one palette knife to transfer my cake on the clean plate. And we are almost done, guys. Yes? And we have one palette knife ready, please, my dear. And we decorate. Yeah, that's okay. We can just clean it, wipe it, and use it. Okay. This is your bird cake, guys, your bird milk cake. Okay, very carefully transfer it on the plate. There we go. Once it's on the plate, you are safe. Take away everything, clean up your surrounding, and start to decorate your cake. For decoration, guys, again, you can use anything you really want to. You can use cream chantilly, which is whipped cream with icing sugar. You can use um, chocolate decorations. We get a cream chantilly and we start to decorate. Okay? You can use some micro herbs. Again, you can use some silver leaf. Okay? If you have it, guys. If you don't, you can just go for the these small berries and that will be more than enough. Okay, now, uh, one last touch. We cut our piping back to get a beautiful design of the cake and we start to decorate. Again, this is just optional, guys. If you do not want to decorate, this is good enough. Just put some chocolate shavings, put some uh, berries and serve it. But I want to make it more pretty. That's why I'm going to use some nice whipped cream to decorate the cake to make it more modern. And to give some color on top of the cake, guys, pastries is all about how they look like, yeah? First, it has to look nice, then it has to taste nice, 
Yeah. So now I prepared some small chocolate decorations. Okay, which we call the tears. Okay, we put here and there. Okay, try to create something beautiful, guys. Pastry all about creativity, right? So try to make, elevate your dessert. No matter what you are making, even small cookies can be decorated and presented very beautiful. Okay, once we are done with decoration of our cake, I'm going to serve it. Looks good, Bradley. What do you think? Looks amazing. Yes? Okay, I cannot wait to taste it. We are not on diet? Like always. No, chef. No? no diet. Okay, no diet. No need diet, guys. We are living only once, right? No need diet. Especially on Thursdays, forget about your diet, in okay? fact. Because you are with us. This sweet session. Beautiful. Okay, sometimes less is more, guys. Do not go too much. Yeah? Just put some small here and there bears for the color. Okay, again, if you prefer, if not, that is more than enough. Some micro herbs, maybe, to give again some freshness of the cake, to the cake. Sorry, of my English friends. We are not English-speaking people, Georgians, yeah? So, almost done. And last touch. Of course, some silver or gold, guys, because we love gold. Right? I'm ready. What do you prefer, gold or silver? Sure, I'm from India, so <laughs> Okay, correct. Good answer. <laughs> yes, you like the yellow gold, right? I like white gold. That's why I prefer to put this white gold to my pastry and make it nice and elegant. Yeah? Next time, Bradley, when you do your webinar, we will be watching how you are decorating with gold. Yes, sir. Yes? Okay, my cake is ready. Okay, I will show you the final product. You can see these beautiful, nice layers of the cake, and you can see nice finishing of the product. This is very humble cake, but we try to elevate and make it much more modern, guys. For any questions regarding recipe, you can text, you can uh, ask. On online and recipe card you will have. Please try to make this cake and uh, we will be happy to see it on our social media page. So thank you very much for being with us. Now we are going to enjoy this cake nicely, Bradley. Bradley yes. cannot wait already. I can see by his eyes. <laughs> okay, we are going to slice it and we are going to meet with you guys next Thursday. Stay with us. Next Thursday will be another very unique cake. I will not tell you which kind of the cake it will be, but people who love baked meringue, stay with us and wait for next Thursday. Thank you very much for watching us and hand over to me, Shanas, and see you soon, guys. Bye-bye. Well, I did not tell you when in the intro when I researched the internet, I found that bird's milk is an ancient Greek idiom for unobtainable delicacy, a delicacy that is difficult to find. And that is how this cake got its name because it's not easy to make that lovely meringue marshmallow filling that's in it. Thank you, Maya, for introducing us to such unusual and tasty delicacies from Eastern Europe, which are not very popular in other parts of the world. Thank you everyone for taking this time to be, to be with us on this webinar and do encourage you to try out these recipes and remember practice makes perfect. Look forward to your attendance on Saturday to watch Chef Ma Sally show us how to make yummy scrummy croissants from scratch. Over to you Karun. Thank you, Shanaz and Chef Maya, for this wonderful session. Uh, I finally got to know what's the meaning of bird's milk. I uh, like, wow, okay, I was so curious to attend this session just beside Chef Maya, and I was just watching each and every step of hers. Just wonderful. For those who have joined us a little late, an email will soon follow with the replay video of this webinar, together with the recipe being handed out as well. Um, and also, we look forward to seeing you in the next session very soon. And yes, until then, goodbye from all of us here.